All right, we're going to do some examples for lesson 10.3 using the theorems we already learned. Okay, so uh, this is our first one. Go ahead and copy this down. All right, that's a 42 right there, 3x minus 3. And draw this circle. You don't have to use your compass to draw it. Just draw a rough, quick sketch of it and copy this down. All right, and then I, go ahead and solve it if you know how to. If you aren't sure, um, at least copy it down. I'll give you a minute to do that. Um, pause the video if you need to, and then come back and be ready to go. All right, so you should have this copied down. If you've already solved it, that's great. Let's take a look at what we've got. So we know that AB, this chord right here, is 42. All right, and we know that this chord down here is 3x minus 3. Now, this is the center of our circle. There will not be just some random dot every time. Any, any time. It, it's, there's a dot there. That it's, it's there for a reason. It's the center of our circle. So we've got perpendicular distances that are equal. All right, so we know that chord AB and chord CD are the same perpendicular distance from the center point. That should sound like a theorem that we learned back in uh, the, the first video for lesson three. And we know that if two chords are the same perpendicular distance from the center point, then those chords have to be congruent to each other. So AB, which is 42, has to equal 3x minus 3. Okay. Does that make sense? If you got questions on this, you need to make sure you let me know. All right, then it's a simple algebra problem. Add 3, 45 equals 3x, divide by the 3, x equals 15. We'll label it. Um, if, it's, if they give me a label, work with it, inches or feet. If not, we'll go ahead and put units on it. Okay, so that's, that should be a pretty easy one, just an application of that theorem. And remember, this theorem does work backwards. So that if they told me that AB was congruent to CD and it had the right angle marks here, and here, then I could find this distance and set it equal to that distance, and so I could set up an algebra problem that way. Okay, all right, let's look at this one. All right, once again, this is not just some random dot. If there's a dot there, a point there, it means it's the center of the circle. Okay, so copy this down, go ahead and try to solve this one, pause the video, and then come back. All right, so hopefully you already solved this one. If you weren't sure what to do, pay attention because I'm going to expect you to be able to do this on your quiz and on your test, all right? So we know that if a diameter is perpendicular to a chord, then what does it do to that chord? Hopefully you're thinking it bisects that chord, and bisect we know means that this side is equal to that side. So once again, we have a pretty simple algebra problem. 5x minus 17 equals 3x plus 11. All right, I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. At the same time, I'm going to add 17 to both sides. Okay, kind of shorten up the, the steps a little bit. 5x minus 3x is 2x. 11 plus 17 is 28. Divided by 2, I get x equals 14. Now that seems kind of big. Right? We don't have a label here, so we'd put units, but that seems kind of big, so let's check it. 5 times 14 is 70. 70 minus 17 is 53. Okay. 3 times 14 is 42. 42 plus 11 is 53. So it does check. It's okay if it's 53. It just means it's a really big circle. Or it means they're using a really small measurement, like maybe 53 millimeters or something like that. Okay, but that's fine. All right. Third example. All right, so we got this one here. All right, so we've got a triangle. All right, I've got two sides that are congruent. So let's think about that. All right, what theorem might help me with this one? All right, remember, draw this out, copy it down, All right, pause the video whenever you need to so that I don't get too far ahead of you. All right, so let's think about what theorem might apply. We know that if we've got congruent chords, then I also have to have congruent arcs. Remember that one? And that was one that worked both ways. If the arcs are congruent, then the chords are congruent. If the chords are congruent, then the arcs are congruent. Now, we also had another one that said if the chords were congruent, they were the same perpendicular distance from the center point. That's true, but it just doesn't help me in this case. All right, so what do I know? I know that if this is x and this is congruent to this, then that up there has to be congruent to this over here. So this must be x as well. Well, now I got this 130 down here. So what do I know about all three arcs? Well, we should know that they add to equal 360, right? So 130 plus x plus x equals 360. X plus X is 2X. Every now and then you get some of you who want to write that as X squared. Be careful. Don't make careless mistakes. All right, subtract that 130. 2X equals 230. Divided by 2. X equals 115. Since it's an arc and it's a measurement, it's going to be degrees, not units. Okay, so there's just some applications of those theorems that we learned back in the first part of this lesson. All right, 
So make sure you are able to do the algebra. Make sure you can set up. A lot of times it's, e it's equals. All right, every now and then it might add to equal something like 180 or 360 or something like that. So just make sure you're careful with those. All right. Make sure you also watch that third video. There's another little bit of an application there using some compass work.